So hi, uh, today I'm with Sally Roberts, who's an artist or an oil painter, actually, based in Pendle in Lancashire in the north of England. So welcome, Sally. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I've only just recently got to know your work through uh, us meeting on the new platform art professional development programme. So, um, yeah, would you like to talk a little bit about what you're currently doing as an oil painter? Um, well, I'm a portrait painter and I take aspects from like um, art history to uh, like tell contemporary stories. Um, so I'm interested in storytelling and um, the domestic space as the setting for um, where, that, where that happens. So it's very like indoors, suge a suggestion of indoors really in each of my paintings. Mm. Yeah, they're very narrative based, I thought, when I viewed them. There's a lot you can extract from viewing your paintings, I think. Yeah, and I'm um, doing these sort of like um, bubble wrap paintings, which is sort of a new project. I don't know where, um, a new project, I don't really know where that's going, but that's sort of um, exciting in a different way. Mm. So tell us about your journey to get there. You've, you went to Wimbledon College of Art, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and I graduated there in 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, since then, I sort of had um, like a health problems, which sort of set me back um, with my art as well, because there was a time where like, I wasn't painting and that was hard. And then it sounds strange, but to get like the stamina of painting back again, which doesn't sound like a, something which would be a big effort, but it, but it really was at the time. And so I'm just glad to be painting again and mm -hmm. trying to get myself set up with that yeah and how was your experience of being at art college um doing because you did fine art painting is that right yeah mm. and that's I, I wanted it to be um a painting course and it was the best thing for me because I learned such a lot um in those three years like especially in the last year just um my, my skill set and like everything I really found what I wanted to do which is portraits and painting people yeah did you start off doing portraiture or something completely different well, when I did, I did um, my, like, my foundation course and nothing was ever said, but you sort of had the feeling that um, painting wasn't really like what we should be doing. I don't yeah. know, it was sort of <laughs> that feeling. So, yeah, so I sort of went in a weird direction. Then it, when I was at Wimbledon, I was like, oh, yeah, I can paint people. That is a thing that you can still do like that. That is what I'm really interested in. Mm. So I got there eventually. Yeah. Uh, and were they uh, sort of wanting you to go in a more abstract um, sort of expressionistic way uh, or not really? Or I think uh, when it was the foundation course, it was quite, um, it, was, it was really good. It was like more like conceptual. So I think, yeah, it, yeah, it, but I was glad I got my painting course and um, I found out and my tutors are really good. So um, that, that was yeah. where I should have been. <laughs> yeah. And so has your work um, diversified or changed? significantly since the end of year show that you did? Um, well, my degree show, I painted like um, like all my like friends and, my, and the students, and that was my degree show. I think it was like seven paintings of them. And I, like, um, I think I painted nearly everyone in the course I painted. So that was really good for learning and painting new people. So since then I've added more of like the storytelling element. And like with lockdown, I've painted a lot of self-portraits partly for the reason of no one else to paint but that was actually um like quite freeing because you're not thinking about what the person who you're painting thinks and you can do what you want you're not thinking about likeness or anything like that yeah so I, I actually enjoyed that really <laughs> yeah and what was that relationship like because I've only done a tiny little bit of that um years and years ago and it's an odd it's an odd thing isn't it actually having to look at yourself for that length of time did you do it from kind of looking in a mirror or did you use ph photography as well? I've done a little bit of working from a mirror, but I do really like um, photography. I, I think I like the the distance because when you're painting actually yourself with a mirror, like I find it so distracting because yeah. you're moving. I like like the sort of step back. So it's you are painting yourself, obviously, but there is a bit of a yeah, a bit a bit of a distance between it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wow. and um, tell me about your sizing as well of your paintings. So they notice some of them are quite big. Yeah, um, I've realised that I just 
at the moment I, I sort of want to step away so I do the same two sizes of paintings yeah. one of them is um like just over a, a meter so it's like um 110 by 70 and the other 70 by 50 so I do yeah. sort of think should I be sort of changing that scale a little bit we'll see um I don't know I don't I don't even know how I've got onto those two sizes but I've got maybe I've got a bit too comfortable with it and I need to um yeah <laughs> change it yeah have you do you work from a studio at home or have you got somewhere that you go to set it um I'm I've got my studio is also my bedroom and I'm at my parents' house. So I've got yeah. like um one side of the room is my bed and the other's paint. And I try not to get paint moving on to the other side. Yeah. So it's it, it it it's okay. I mean it's for for the moment it's good, but obviously, you know, for the future you'd hope to have a bit more space, but yeah. I can manage for the moment. Yeah, because so we were talking the other day with somebody else about how the space that you work sort of determines your size in some yeah. ways because you're constrained yeah by that I mean I don't think I'd ever go on a huge scale but you are right because there's only there's a limit of how much room you've got really isn't there yeah yeah so what drew you into going to art school in the first place I don't know I, I don't know I sort of um it just felt like the right thing to do like I knew that there wasn't anything else that I wanted and that was that was my interest so I sort of just without overthinking it and I don't know at what point I thought I want to be an artist it was just I knew that's what I wanted to do and I thought I'd just carry it on to each stage mm -hmm. and then eventually I got to the point where it's like obviously at some point I must have thought this is what I want to do mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's, it's an odd one did you draw uh, or do creative stuff a lot when you were much younger as a child uh, I started off music was my thing so I had like a clarinet lessons and I was in like um, school orchestras and bands mm -hmm. and at some point that moved into painting I think I didn't like um performing so yeah. maybe maybe that was it and when you're painting it's you eat more solitary I, I don't I don't know what what at what point there was the change but I knew that I think the difference is with art I really wanted to put the work into it mm -hmm. I really wanted to practice and get better and yeah, I really wanted to get a, a higher skill with it. Mm. Mm. And so where are you currently um, moving towards in your painting practice? Where would you like it to go next? Ooh, uh, I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know. That's part of what I, what I struggle with is I don't know if I had like set or even flexible goals. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of seeing seeing how it goes I, I feel like I should be more like that with this is what I want or yeah and I feel like I am in I am improving with that um sort of thing I don't I never really know what the next stage is and hopefully it will just happen naturally yeah. I am working at it but you know <laughs> yeah 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 um I was wondering about the artists that you might draw, be drawing inspiration from other painters or not painters uh, who who do you look to um, in contemporary and or classical? I went to see the Paula Vega exhibition in London, and I, that uh, that was that was amazing. So um, she's a big influence at the moment, I'd say. Yeah. And I'm, I'm I'm often with like art history. I'm often like taking like compositions and then doing my own thing with it. So it's just different paintings that I like and think there's something I can do with. Mm. I have to say your work does remind me a lot of Paula Frego's work. Mm -hmm. It struck me as being um, similar, of a similar feeling. It's, it's, there's a lot of um, expression in there and multi different narratives going on. That's, that, that, that's good to know. It's hard to, especially when you're working by yourself, it's what's been good about like the new platform thing is you don't really get other people's opinions a lot. So it's, it's good to have someone to talk to about it. Yeah. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? It's been really interesting doing the presentations and yeah. having, a, having a, because with out, out with a, a kind of art school environment or a professional development environment, unless you exhibit regularly, you don't necessarily get the feedback as often yeah. as you need to. So it is a pretty solitary <laughs> profession um, working as an artist, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, um, you do residencies and all sorts, so um. 
I don't know, maybe maybe you know more than me, like what, what which direction you should go in and all of that. I think it depends. I don't think there's any one. I think sometimes um, having a creative life means that you've got various different pathways to follow and they all uh, juggle alongside themselves at, at different points. So you might have a residency in part of the year and then do an exhibition in another part of the year and teach in another part of the year. So all of those things coexist at similar times and there isn't just one kind of pathway yeah, you can yeah. follow. Yeah. So many options, too many options, I think, somehow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you have you shown your paintings out outside of um your degree shows then since you um graduated? Yeah, I mean I've applied to um open calls and and that sort of thing. So yeah, I've I've start I started to do that um over the past year and a half, maybe. Mm. So it's getting used to like shipping paintings and with like COVID um it was quite odd because I was sending all these paintings but I couldn't go to the exhibition so it was um yeah. a bit of an odd feeling getting them in the boxes and off they go and then yeah so I'm um, slowly yeah so where where did you last show then was that in this country uh, yeah, yeah yeah I've never done any abroad I think it, the last one might have been Sheffield mm -hmm. I think no, or maybe, yeah, maybe no, maybe it was Doncaster, somewhere quite more more local, which was good, I think. Yeah, and did you get some good feedback from that? Well, I couldn't go to um the private view for um one of them, so that that that, that missed out. Um, and I think that I did go to one private view, and that was really pushing myself because that's a very different environment, and especially like not being um. Yeah, not been, since the art school, not being in that sort of space and having to talk to people. So it was really, really interesting. But I think next time I'd be more prepared for it. And yeah. then, then I'd get more from it because I'd be able to um, talk and listen more. Yeah. So do you feel like you're following your um, path of portraiture? Is that what is still holding your interest now to paint people? Yeah. Um, it, it, I'm always going to be painting people, I think. Um don't really know why. It's just um yeah, that's that's it. That's that's it for me. I'm just interested in faces and people's inner life and all of that and expressing that. So interesting. I was reading on your uh statement that you paint a lot from photography rather than um live and I guess that is a different relationship isn't it in a way to I, I guess it gives you more time I would have said maybe I mean I'm yeah. not a portrait painter so what do you think the difference is between those two ways of working I think that when you have a person there for me and maybe it's that I'm out of practice is it's almost like too much information mm -hmm. um, and I think that for me, if there's if there's less in the photography, then that sort of helps me maybe add my own to it, or mm. it, maybe that's it. But if having a person there for me is quite distracting, maybe so you can take it like your own pace when you're there with photos. It's all in your own time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm interested. So then, so the kind of narratives that you build in. So if you're if you choose to use props or other guys is within your painting are those a considered element before you construct your composition or do you add them in as you go along uh, mainly it, that will be planned before because that would be part of like the story idea that I would have so it's not not often that I would be yeah more rarely that I'd be part way through and thinking this needs something else I, I usually would have thought of that before mm, yeah Interesting. And have you painted sort of family members and, and things? Yes, I have. Um, <laughs> some of them like it a lot more than others. Um, but I, I, I like, I do like painting people that, um, that I'm close to because it's sort of um, exploring that relationship and mm. it is, is really interesting. Yeah, fascinating. It's kind of inspiring me to want to paint again uh, faces mm -hmm. but I, I'm really really terrible at <laughs> drawing the human figure <laughs> but really, I always really look up to people that can um, 
so accurately capture somebody else, which you can do so well. But you still paint, and um, because that's yours behind you, isn't it? I do paint, but I just don't paint. I can't paint figures figuratively. I find that really tricky to do three D shapes and make them look human. <laughs> well, I don't know if I could do abstract. So yeah, yeah. Isn't it funny what you gravitate towards? Really interesting. So do you spend uh, quite a lot of time in between? I, I mean, I had this conversation the other day with somebody about sketchbooking because I don't sketchbook a lot anymore. I used to do quite a lot, but now I don't start from that platform. I often start from using my camera or sound recording or something like that. Mm -hmm. But do you find that you use a sketchbook? I, I do, especially for like um, the first idea. So I'll, I'll write down words or phrases and then I start with like very rough sort of like almost like stick figure compositions and then that will yeah. slowly build up. But I don't have anything like um, too finished. It's more like here's a little figure, there's a little figure. How does that work? What does it look like? And there, there are colours like I'll, yeah, I put colours in as well, but it's quite rough. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting and are you going to put in for any shows in the next year or so uh I'll, I'll apply for things and fingers crossed and um, I might have something in like just the early summer of next year so I might have talking to a gallery about that so we'll mm -hmm. see so if you don't mind me going back to the time when you said you had some health issues and you couldn't yeah. paint for a while, what, because um, I always get quite antsy if I can't do anything um, mm -hmm. creatively for a while, I start feeling like I've, you know, lost half of myself and <laughs> need to get it back. Do, how does it feel for you when you, you're out of action for a while? I think that, that um, at that point when I couldn't paint, um, that's when looking back I realised how much painting does mean to me because when you've when you've lost that that's when I really realized that I need it I need to be painting because I'm don't know what I'm doing without it like my whole my day really focuses painting mm -hmm. um so yeah in a positive way it made me realize that I need to do this and it was worth the effort of getting back into it and relearning and all of that mm. and now I do feel like I'm in a good place with it mm. Do you feel like it sort of physically and mentally gives you something back when you're when you're physically painting? Mm. Mm. I mean, it's good because you can see straight away how much you've done in that day. So I think for me, like, I almost feel like guilty when I'm not painting. So if you can look at a painting like, OK, I did that little section today and that yeah. doesn't give me a bit of fulfillment. I'm like, yeah, I did something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And do you have that kind of way where you do so many paintings or so much of a painting and then you have to kind of leave it alone for a period of time and then come back and rework it? I always say that I'm going to do that, but then I rarely go back and change it. Like, really? Um, I'm, it's sort of like my um, way of finishing a painting is, OK, right, I'll start the new painting or I'll do something different. But then often it's rare that I'll go and make the changes. So maybe I'm just kidding myself and I should just be like, okay, that's finished. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It's a, when is a painting finished? Is that, that, that question that we always have, isn't it? But um, maybe you're quite an instinctive worker that you know when you've put those marks down that that's it. Well, maybe in a few years I'll go back and paint over them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your entire collection. But I don't like it. No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny though, isn't it? Because yeah, I've done that recently in the in the last in that little studio residency. Found myself just repainting over entire the entire thing and then sort of starting again. I sort of quite like that though. I mean, it's very drastic, but the, I sort of yeah, I sort of like going over my old paintings. I mean, like, no, it's gonna yeah. that's gone now. Moving on. Yeah, you do get to that stage, don't you? Like, oh, they they can all go now because <laughs> work through that. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. It's so nice to um, hear you talk about painting in that way. It's really interesting. I'm glad that the computer decided to work. Oh, no, it's so good. We had a few technical issues, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> but we're definitely working. No, no frozen frames anymore. Yeah. So um, where's the best place that people can find out about your work? Ooh. 
Uh, well, I've got my website and my Instagram. That's that's probably the best places, I would say. Yeah. So if I put your links um, in the bottom of this description and at the end of the film, people can follow you on there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, super. That's great. Thanks so much for uh, willing being willing to be interviewed and come on the series. It's really exciting it's, getting to it's meet It's been you. interesting, yeah. Yeah. It's been good. Great. Well, um, let us know what you're up to with future work and when you're posting new things. Do you have um, an email list of people that you email out to? A, a, a very sort of like a, sh a short one. I probably should work on that. <laughs> get it all ready and working. We'll see. I'll get a ma mailing list together at some point. Yeah, great. Oh, thanks, Sally. That's really great. Nice to meet you. Oh, thank you for asking me to do it. You're welcome.